Our topic right now is the Laffer Curve. It's one of the integral elements of what we call Reaganomics or supply-side economics, and it's still a, a sort of an underpinning of many of the arguments today on the, uh, the neoclassical side of economics in favor of continued tax cuts. So let's take a look at what the Laffer Curve was trying to present. Again, named for Arthur Laffer, uh, who presented this to uh, some conservative individuals uh, who adopted it as part and parcel of the Reagan economic plan to justify their, their rather large tax cuts at the time, uh, arguing that those tax cuts would not reduce the revenues collected by government and therefore create larger deficits. So let's take a look at the way the Laffer Curve theorizes uh, revenue collections, tax revenues collected by government, will behave when marginal tax rates rise. Remember, marginal tax rates are the, the tax rate you pay on the last dollars that you earn. Now, to begin with, if you had a zero tax rate, of course, you wouldn't be collecting any tax revenue. So there's our point of beginning. And as you begin to raise your tax rates, you would expect that people will pay correspondingly more taxes. And so you'd see a behavior or a relationship with a positive slope on it. Higher tax rates, you collect more money. No argument so far with uh, the Laffer curve. But at some point, the argument goes, when you begin to raise tax rates even higher, your tax collections don't continue in that sort of linear, one-for-one, one, here we go, fashion. That in fact, and instead, at some higher rate, your tax collections begin to not grow, not increase, as much as they had been. And if you keep raising taxes, your tax collections, while they're growing for a while, will reach a maximum and, in fact, at very high, what we call prohibitive, prohibitively high taxes, your tax collections by government will decrease. And this is kind of the range we want to talk about right in here. So the argument is if you raise taxes on people, and we're talking personal income tax, if you raise taxes on people high enough, they're going to find ways to stop paying as much taxes. Now, why would that occur? Why even would tax revenues slow down their growth rate, even though they're still growing? Well, think about this, and, and we'll take an extreme to make the, the point. Suppose that your marginal tax rate were 90%. Just assume that for a minute. And I offered you the chance to work some overtime Saturday this week, and you would make $500. I'll pay you $500. But if you're paying a 90% tax rate, how much money are you going to keep? And the answer is only 10% of that $500. So I would be offering you the chance to make $50 for working all day Saturday, to which you might say, no, I think I'd rather go fishing. All right? So very high tax rates, at least in part, provide a disincentive to work, a penalty for working harder because you keep so little of what you get. So there's one reason. With higher tax rates, people won't work as much because it's not worth it to them for the after-tax money they get to keep. A couple of other things going on. Suppose, suppose that I offered you that $500 and you thought, well, let me go to my accountant or my tax attorney and see if they can find me some kind of loophole so that I don't have to pay taxes on this money. And so you would have an incentive to go out and find legal ways to avoid paying your taxes. Tax avoidance in this country is totally legal. Tax evasion is illegal. That's when you illegally uh, avoid your taxes, if you will. So you would talk perhaps to your accountant and he would say, well, if you do this and you claim that and you did the other, uh, instead of paying 90% on that money, you'd only have to pay about 4% or something extreme, okay? Oh, okay. So now, what happens? You're keeping most of that $500, and you're paying very little extra taxes, maybe, maybe none. So what happens to tax revenues at those high tax rates? Again, 
government's not going to be getting any taxes or very little taxes out of that $500. And then the third extreme, right? Your accountant looks at you and says, man, I don't know any way to give you a tax break or a tax loophole to hide this money. And you're thinking, well, I really want that money. I really need that money. Hmm. Well, when I file my income taxes, I get to claim an exemption for myself, my wife, and my two kids. And that reduces the amount of taxes I have to pay. I'll tell you what. This year when I file taxes, I'll also claim, let's see, me, my wife, my two kids, and Spot, our dog. I'll just call Spot one of my exemptions, one of my dependents, and hope the IRS doesn't catch it. Or maybe I won't even show the $500 on my tax return if I can find a way to do that. And so now you're not avoiding, uh, avoiding taxes. You are practicing tax evasion. You are illegally hiding your income. Do you think people with very high tax rates would have some incentive to do that? And the argument is, of course, human nature. So the, the bottom line is, at some tax rate, I don't know what it is, at some tax rate, a maximum marginal tax, any tax rates above that will cause the government to collect fewer dollars in revenue. So if your tax rates are somewhere up in this range, above that maximum collection, right? this would be the maximum dollars collected by government. If you raise your taxes above that, you collect less money, right? You're up in here somewhere. Read down. And so we describe this as the prohibitive range for tax rates. The prohibitive range. So that if your, if your economy, your country, your, your government has tax rates up in here, they are truly punitive. They're punishing people for working and making extra money. They're providing or becoming a disincentive to work, a, an incentive to cheat. And so, take it one step further. If, in fact, your economy is operating up here, point A, and you were to reduce your tax rate from this level one down to a lower level, down here, level two, what would happen? You would go from point A on the Laffer curve to point B on the Laffer curve. That's not showing up real well. Point A on the Laffer curve and point B on the Laffer curve, lower tax rates, and what happens to the amount of money collected by government? It increases. That, in fact, lower tax rates could result in more people working, people working more often, less tax avoidance, less tax evasion, and you could, in fact, you would, in fact, increase tax revenues with a lower tax rate. Think about that. Everybody wins in that sense. People are working more, they're keeping more money, and the government's collecting more revenues. This sounds pretty good if it works. And that was part of the background behind the Reagan administration's approach to supply-side economics on how to stimulate the economy through an emphasis on shifting the aggregate supply curve, not the aggregate demand curve, a la Keynes. So, Laffer curve, part and parcel of supply-side economics. Keep it in mind. Uh, and, yeah, you can ask the question, did it work? Thanks.